Joseph's visions have inspired people around the world. Rick and Alyssa of the House of Micah Sound Chamber share his global perspective and are very active in connecting the world community and in sharing ceremonies of personal healing and world peace with their community. Here, they share intimate details of working with ceremonies of fire and ceremonies of water and with Joseph's teachings on pilgrimage. This is from Rick and Alyssa to you. The House of Micah Peace Chamber is located in upstate New York. Most of the land is in a town called Skodak, and a small portion of it crosses the border into a place with the name of Sand Lake. We have come to deeply love this land, and we closely honor the turning of the seasons from spring to summer, summer to fall, and fall to winter. We see ourselves as caretakers of the land, caretakers of the very self. The people in this community speak of this land as their home, because the home is where we find the self. We religiously honor the fire ceremony and we dedicate it to Oceanus and the healing of the waters. We build our fire in the courtyard of the peace chamber and watch the light of the fire play against the walls. In this way, we light that which is just beyond our awareness because the wall is the symbol of the limits of our awareness. The House of Micah is located about five miles east of the Hudson River. The river flows from the top of the Adirondack Mountains all the way down to Manhattan and into the Atlantic Ocean. We consider it a holy river, like the Ganges or the Amazon. The Hudson River was very badly polluted by GE between 1938 and 1976. You can't eat fish from many areas of the river, especially if you are a pregnant woman. In the Hopi prophecy, they make references to rivers with fishes that have birth defects, like extra eyeballs or two heads, and some of this has happened here in our area. We believe that as the rivers go, so do the people. When the river is healed, the people will be healed. We usually build the 10 levels of our fire by chanting the Tiwa numbers from 1 to 10 to the best of our ability. But sometimes we switch that up by having people call out different ways in which water appears in our environment. People will say things like oceans, streams, rain, tears, snot, amniotic fluid, and others. This practice has helped us deepen our appreciation and recognition of the universality of water. Sometimes we ask people to bring small amounts of water from ponds or streams or rivers near where they live. We place the containers of water around the courtyard during the ceremony. We offer prayers on behalf of the spirit of water and place our intentions into the water that has been collected. After the ceremony, people take the water and return it to its source. We believe that returning the blessed water to its source helps to cleanse and remove impurities while spreading healing and prayers throughout the waterways of the entire world. Over the years, we have incorporated different elements into the fire ceremony to focus on healing the waters. Sometimes we will place a bowl of water on the central altar. After the fire dies out, we will go back into the chamber and chant the vowel sounds. Then we pour water from the bowl into cups, offer some to the sipapu, and then each drink. It is amazing how good that water tastes and how much it heals. During our annual midwinter drumming vision quest, we create a small medicine wheel from cornmeal and tobacco offerings. At the end of the ceremony, we create a sacred bundle with these offerings. We designate someone to take the bundle and release its content into Lake Tear of the Clouds, the highest source of the Hudson River up in the Adirondack Mountains. 
At the House of Micah Peace Chamber, we honor the tradition that Joseph practiced for many years of pilgrimage on Good Friday. Typically, a few of us will walk a 20-mile route from the chamber to a sacred shrine or holy place. As we walk, we feed every stream or creek that we pass with cornmeal or tobacco. We make these offerings knowing that the stream will eventually lead back to the ocean, that our prayers will be carried back to the cosmic unconscious. We understand that everything we do for the sake of healing of the waters is really a metaphor for the healing of the cosmic unconscious. We try not to make too much of these ceremonies. We just follow the inspiration of the moment. We try our best to speak and move in the patterns of nature with love, respect, and dignity. We pray that these ceremonies are like the water in a sweat lodge, released from the ladle, touching the stones of our ancestors, and turned to sleep, released to travel wherever it will travel and touch whatever it will touch. Thanks for listening. Peace. Oh, yeah.